Welcome back to My Car Shop. Today we're doing a tech tip on this one simple subject. What axle ratio should I choose? Let's watch the show intro and I'll see you in 30 seconds. Working out of a 100 year old refurbished barn, bringing 35 years of experience to projects considered beyond repair. Vision, creativity, and problem solving are the essential tools in this place. Watch as we transform junk into polished metal miracles. This is My Cars Shop. One of the common ways that people try to determine what gear ratio they're going to use in their car is to just simply ask questions on the internet. And that's not necessarily a bad way to do it, but it's not the most educated way to do it. Another way is using an online calculator, which is great. Uh, but I still think that we're becoming too dependent upon just asking questions and getting answers and not knowing how to think. So I thought I would take the time to show you today how to come up with determining an RPM, or excuse me, a miles per hour on your car based upon a couple of factors. First of all, it's going to be based upon RPM. In other words, how many RPM your engine is turning. It's going to be based upon the diameter of your tires. And underneath that, it's going to be based upon your axle ratio. You can bring your transmission in if you want. We'll talk about that briefly. And then a factor called 336, which I will show you what that is here because I've already laid it out for you. What we are trying to determine is how many revolutions per mile the tire is going to make. So we're taking inches per mile times pi times minutes in an hour, okay? So we're gonna come up with this constant factor for this calculation. So inches per mile is 5,280 feet in a mile times 12 gives us 63,360 inches in a mile. Pi times 60 gives us 188.4. We divide 63,000 by 188.4. So that's how many rotations per minute um, in an hour. And that gives us 336.3. Okay, so that's where our number 336 comes from. And that is a constant used in the equation. A lot of people know the 336, but they don't know exactly where it comes from and why. So it has to do with inches per mile, um, times pi times minutes per hour. We could obviously get a lot more in depth with the formula um, and get into a lot of theory and there's multiple ways you can manipulate this formula and different ways, different factors you can take out. But I just want to give you a simple calculation so you can check your online calculators and see if they're right. It's very simple math. Now I'm going to use a car that I know the numbers on. Um, it's a car that I have over there in the shop and or in the garage and it is my 68 Dodge Dart Pro Street because when I built that car I actually started at the rear axle, started with my tires and worked my way forward with that car rather than the way I built cars in the past which was starting building an engine and then working my way back. So my 68 Dodge Dart GTS turns 3000 RPM on a tire diameter of 31.5 okay so that is our uh, we're going to multiply that 3000 times 31.5 then we're going to divide that by the axle ratio of 4.57 i'm going to make the transmission in this one a one so that there's no reduction in that automatic transmissions actually do have about a two percent slippage you can calculate that in i'm not going to in this because i want to keep this simple um, so if you wanted to you could use a factor of 0.002 in there uh, to get that two percent factor but uh, we're going to just simply go to our calculated number of 336 and we are going to come up with a miles per hour. Now I know what this car turns going down the road at 60. I know my speedometer's off a little bit, um, but we'll do the math. And I'm not against calculators. I'm not gonna do all this in my head. I'm not that smart. Um, so we're gonna do the math here. 3,000 times 31.5 equals 94,500. That's the number we're looking for. 
I know that number's close because in math, three times three is nine. So my number should be a number that starts close to nine. That's how I check myself. So we're looking at 94,500. I guess I need to pick a better marker. This one's dried out. Okay, 94,500 is our factor there. All right. 457 times 336, 4.57 times 336 equals 1,500. 3 times 5 is 15, so we know that's close. 1,536.52. I'm always checking my math in generalities. Um, if, it, if it's reasonable, if, it's, if it seems practical, like, okay, 3 times 5 is 15, it should be a number beginning with something close to 15. That's just a quick check. So, we're going to take 94,500 94, divided by 1536, 61.5 miles an hour. That's exactly accurate. My car, right around 60 miles an hour, 60, 62, turns 3,000 RPM. Okay? So... The cool thing about this is uh, there's other ways to calculate this and there's other formulas, but that's not my point for this quick video today. If I wanted to change and see uh, what my car would do with a 411 gear in it, I can simply do the math and see that my speed's going to go up by this much here. Or I can go the other way and go to a 490 gear and see that my speed drops. The other cool thing is I know that my engine redlines at 7,200 RPM. So let's do that math real quick. That's my chip. I got a 7,200 RPM chip in there. So I take my number here, get rid of this 94,500. That's about right, 226,000. It's about double what we had before, and three times seven is 21. So two, two, six, eight, zero, zero. Now let's divide that, two, two, six, eight hundred. Divided by 1536.52. Technically, theoretically, the top miles per hour of my car is 147.60. Now, why is that significant? Because this miles per hour, which I believe would push me into the mid-11s in the quarter mile, um, maybe high 10s, depending on how quick it accelerates. Um, this helps me when I'm calculating how much horsepower and the power curve of my engine, my torque converter. So I really believe, and since I built that car 20 years ago or more, 30, 30, yeah, starting in 1994, so do the math. I'm not good at it, believe it or not, uh, 27 years ago. Um, that helps me know how much horsepower I need to get that 3,200 pound car to reach its maximum potential in the quarter mile um, of 147 miles an hour. And there's another whole formula we can go through. It's a little more complicated um, that can tell me that I need approximately, let's guesstimate 800 horsepower to calculate that, to get that car down the track at 7,200 RPM in one quarter of a mile. So the numbers are fascinating. It's fun to play with them. Um, but just wanted to share with you that basic formula on how to calculate your cruising RPM based upon the engine RPM, tire size, and axle ratio um, using this factor. So it's RPM times tire, tire diameter, axle ratio times our Calculated factor to determine how many rotations per mile um, times uh, 336 is our number, and that will give us our cruising RPM. That's very helpful also in, in sizing a torque converter. You do not ever on a streetcar that you're going to drive any distance want to size the RPM of your torque converter over what your cruising RPM is, or cruising um, miles per hour is. So if I wanted to cruise this car, uh, at 60 miles an hour on average to take it on long trips. I want to make sure that my torque converter is below 3,000 
RPM or I'm going to be constantly cutting transmission oil and overheating the transmission, potentially hurting the transmission. So in the case of my car, uh, my uh, torque converter in that car is actually 2800. So I did, I did that math, planning to know I was going to drive that car up to 45 minutes at a time. Uh, I was being extra conservative. I could go with a much higher converter, but quite frankly, hitting the happy juice button uh, takes the torque converter out of the factor once I'm rolling, and uh, it's not a problem on a street car. On a drag car, that would not be nearly enough converter, but the car was built for the street. I have literally spent hours of my life playing with these formulas and a few other ones, just having fun and determining how to build a car the way I want. You can use this in four-wheel drive trucks. You can use this on any vehicle you're doing. If you want to determine maximum RPM per gear in your transmission, you can enter that factor right here, uh, the gear reduction in your transmission, and determine in first gear at 8,000 RPM, I'm going to achieve 30 miles an hour or whatever. I'm just making those numbers up. Um, but to keep it simple, RPM uh, times diameter divided by axle ratio, uh, transmission at one to one with our calculated 336 and we know that we are going 60 miles an hour uh, in my GTS and it does that's what the tech reads thanks for watching this I hope it was educational and informative drop those questions down below if you have them if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do hit the bell so you receive notifications we've got a lot of fabricating projects and a lot of really cool stuff going on here in the shop and I just wanted to take a few minutes to bring you this tech tip today we're on Facebook and Instagram forward slash my car shop over on our Facebook page we have a special post uh, pinned to the top of the page called show us your junk it's where you get the opportunity to share with us the project that you are working on right now. We'd love to see what you're doing. Thanks to Super Clean. We appreciate your sponsorship of the channel. And one more thing, if you haven't been around here before, rock on. <laughs>